Hi, in today's video I'm going to be taking a look at FreeBSD jails and jailing GUI applications. And what I'm going to be doing is creating a jail for Firefox. And the reason for this is because on FreeBSD we don't have sandboxes for our browsers. So what we're going to do is create a jail to restrict access to the host file system so that it only has access to the downloads directory. So <coughs> This is Firefox, and if I press Control O, <coughs> what you'll see is I have full access to everything on the file system because Firefox is running as my user, so it has access to all the files that I do. So uh, basically, you can access you know sensitive files like your shush keys. So what I'm going to do now is switch across over here. And this is the jail version of Firefox, which I call Jailfox. So what I'm going to do is press Control O again. And what you'll see is we only have a single directory that Firefox has access to in the home directory, which is the downloads directory. So you'll see there are no um, documents directory or anything like that. So let me just switch across. So here's. Firefox running on the FreeBSD host. You can see all the files in my home directory. Whereas if I switch across to the jailed version of Firefox, you'll see it's only got access to the downloads directory. So all I'll do is just as a quick test is um, create a file in that directory to show you. And touch test. You can see test there. If I switch back here, You'll now see that test file um, showing up in the downloads directory of the jailed version of Firefox. So what this means is we can upload and download files from the jailed version of Firefox into the host download directory. What I'm going to do is actually take you through this setup. But what I want to do is actually mention, first of all, how this is running. I'm running FreeBSD 14.1 P3 and I'm using Wayland and you can see here I'm using DWL as my Wayland compositor which is built without X Wayland support so this is running as a pure Wayland environment. So what I'm doing here is actually running this this window here is from the jailed version of Firefox, but it's being displayed on the host using Wayland. So a lot of tutorials will actually set up a jail and then use something like VNC or um, SSH X forwarding, something like that. What we're doing here is we're basically integrating this into the system so that it's running pretty much as a native application. We have access to the GPU, the audio, and the display. I'm going to take you how, um, through how we set this up. What I want to do is actually show you what we can do here. So we've got YouTube. So I want to show you how this works. So we've got a Firefox window. This is being displayed with Wayland. So what I'm going to do is actually come across um, to a video. So let's. Uh, Let's pick Magpie channel. Okay. Ian was asking. You can see the audio is coming through here. It's available. <laughs> so it's playing video. Let's let's check what the 720. Yeah, you know, put it up to HD. <laughs> now what I want to show you is the pop out. So. What I'm going to do is just set this to, uh, is this on tiled mode? Yeah, okay. So because I'm using DWL, which is a tiling window manager, the pop-up window is appearing tiled next to the browser here. If you're on a stacking window manager, a traditional desktop, this would appear as a floating window. Uh, I could faff about and... Um, there we go. So you can now see it's um, sort of a floating window there. But 
the important thing to note is is I can pop the window out of this Firefox browser that's jailed so the it's not can um, I can pop this out and move it to the um, second display so uh, see if I can pop this out and move this across and uh, switch across there you can see I've got that on the second display now so let me just switch that back over there so the thing I wanted to show you is that the even though we're running this Firefox in a Wayland window here we can still pop the video out and put it on another monitor so it's behaving exactly uh, as a normal version of Firefox would and again we only have um, access to the downloads directory so it's basically isolated from the host so it's only got access to that downloads directory and not the rest of your files so that's YouTube so what I want to do is actually take you through getting this set up so I'm just going to um, close the browser there and close that window and just take you through this okay so these are my notes on getting this set up so what I'm going to do is actually take you through from scratch to set up a FreeBSD classic thick jail and be able to install GUI applications and launch them from the host using a desktop entry so um, you can see here like jailfox that will open the the browser and it will just basically start them up as though they're a native application what you can also do is run an entire desktop um, so let me just open up Firefox rather than the old version okay Uh, let me just find the yeah so what I want to do is show you a uh, little forum thread I was posting to on the FreeBSD forum so there's people having problems installing KDE 6 Wayland on FreeBSD 14 so what I did was actually set up a thick jail and actually run KDE 6 as a Wayland application in a jail and have the window displayed on the host. Now you can see here it says Linux, so you think, ah, yeah, that's a con. But you can see down here it says kernel version 14.1 release P3. And that's just some weird kind of glitch. And you can see down here um, in the window BBSD Classic 14.1 release P3. Uh, generic AMD 64 so you can see these are the screenshots of KDE 6 running in a jail being displayed on the host running um, DWL so you can see I got the um, the audio working um, as a side note it uses pipe wire but you can get the audio working so I've got the audio working this is KDE 6 with Firefox playing uh, Rick Astley with the video popped out in picture and picture mode and what I wanted to do before I get into this is actually uh, explain the difference so when you're running a GUI desktop like this you're actually constrained to one window so you can't actually pop this out when you're running an application like Firefox as opposed to a whole desktop you can pop the video out onto a second display um, but I just wanted to show you some screenshots of a KDE 6 so you can see there the Nvidia settings so this is all the Nvidia settings um, in the jail um, connected to the host um, tiling and you can see here uh, some more screenshots so what I'm going to do is actually go through and explain how you get this all set up so the handbook uh, is what you want to read but what we need to do is actually 
set up the jails. So what we're going to do is run um, sudo sysrc jail underscore enabled equals yes. Um, and what you've got down here is um, settings for parallel start. The um, name of the um, should be it should be classic. Um, the name of the jail, um, and these are for the networking. So what you do is you create a cloned interface um, of the loopback device, and you create a you set an IP range. So um, and that's a bit better. So that's what goes in your etc. Uh, RC dot com. We don't. Um, what we do is we don't enable um, parallel start for this for GUI applications because what happens is because we're mounting the downloads directory from the host to the jail, what we do is we actually, after we boot up, we manually start up the jail because you set it to start up automatically. What will happen is you'll get an error because the file system won't be mounted in time for the jail to mount the downloads directory. But anyway, what we've got here is the etcetera.rc.com. So we enable jails and we don't actually enable these um these two. Um because as I said we have issues with the file system mounting. So what we've got is enable jail cloned interface, uh, the loopback device. So what we're going to do is actually have a look at the jail directory. So what we need to do is actually create the ZFS data sets and set the mount point. So we switch to root. And what we do is we run ZFS create dash O mount point user local jails, Z root jails. Let me just um, open a browser, um, ZFS list. And what you'll see here is ZRoot jails. And inside here, I've actually got some other data sets that I'm going to walk you through. So we create a user local jails, ZRoot jails data set. And inside that, what we do is we create another one called ZRoot jails media, templates, and containers. And this is where we are going to download a particular release of FreeBSD and then create the jail inside the container data set. So what we need is our etcetrajail.conf. So we create the um, etcetrajail.conf if it doesn't exist. And what we do is we have these um, this bit of code. So let me just take you through except for jail.conf you can see here that's basically the same code we've got in this um, document here we've got exec start exec stop and exec console so this is the main configuration file for the how the jails are set up and what we do is we create additional configuration files for each jail we want to start rather than putting them in one document uh, one file here so that's the first step is creating the etc jail.com right so what we need to do also is create devfs rules and what these do is allow the jail to access specific parts of the host um so it's exec for uh, ex etc devfs rules and what you'll see here is, first of all, it's got a name, jails equals seven. So seven is the name of the rule. And what we're doing here is, um, these are just sort of standard ones, that um, uh, basically template. But these are the bits that we want to have a look at. Add path mixer, DSP, DRI, DRM, NVIDIA, and speaker. And what this does is, Allow access to um, let's see LSL dev 
DSP, DSP. So you can see the DSP, that's all the audio devices. Um, DRI and DRM um, and NVIDIA are for the GPU. Uh, mixer and speaker are for the audio as well. So what this basically does is create a set of rules to expose certain parts of the host's file system and devices to the jail. And the way we do that is by using this um, number here, seven in our uh, jail config. So that's what we need to get onto. So <clears throat> the other thing is after you need, after you've added the um, DevFL, F, DevFS rules, you should reboot for the system to actually pick it up. Um, because otherwise, if you carry on through the process, you can actually um, get some errors where stuff's not sort of ready, basically. So what we're going to do now is actually create the thick jail. So these are basically some notes on how you can create the thick jail. Now, there's two ways you can do this. Um, I'm doing the method where you manually download the release you want to use and extract it. But you can also use BSD install. I think it's the command is BSD install jail and then the path to where you want to have BSD install dump everything basically so you can just basically run bsd install jail the path to the jail and use the installer just like you would on a host setting up a new machine to, to get everything set up but what i'm going to be doing is actually um doing this the manual way so what you do is you switch to root and then what we do is we um execute the following command to download the use land so what we're doing is running fetch and the path to 14.1 release base and you can see we're then extracting that to user local jails media 14.1 release base txz and the user local jails media is the data set that we created earlier and we don't actually create a mount point for that um, unlike the top level so once that's downloaded, what we do is we extract the contents into the jail directory and we execute the following commands to extract the user land into the jails directory. So what we do is we run as root um, mkdir-p use local jails containers classic. And then what we do is we run tar-xf user local jails media 14.1 release base dot txz dash capital um, c and then user local jails container containers classic dash dash unlink so what that does is that extracts the base user land into the user local jails containers classic directory that we created okay so once we've actually extracted the user land um, into the jail we're going to set some stuff up so what we need to do is actually um, copy the resolve and local time from the host to the jail. So you can see here, all these commands are done as root. So what we do is cp exec resolve.conf. So that's your exec, that's your, you know, your exec resolve.conf, yeah. Uh, we copy that to user local jails containers classic etc resolve.conf and then we do the same for the local time and i want to mention um actually the dns with the resolve but i'll get into it in a bit so once that's um been done you've copied the resolve.conf and local time from the host to the jail what you need to do is update to the latest patch level and this brings me on to, to another point is that you can act, um, there are a lot of commands on FreeBSD, like um, FreeBSD update, um, top PKG, um, that also work, uh, BSD install, also work with jails. So what you can see here is you are used to running FreeBSD update on your host machine. 
what we're doing here is running with the dash B flag use local jails containers classic fetch install and that basically updates the system in the jail okay so what we're going to do um, is now have a look at the um, classic is it let me just check um except for jail.com d yeah classic update my notes as i go along but yeah classic c okay so what we do um if you're not root then use sudo but we run sudo mkdir dash p etc jail.conf.d and then what we're going to do is in that directory we're going to create a file called classic.comp so here's the um, config so what we got up here first of all this section here this is actually the name of the jail we what we then have here is host.hostname equals name so what that's going to do is set the host name of the jail to whatever this is up here so this just consider this as a variable name heard here it's going to set the host name to name we then set the path so we've got user local jails container name and so again so that's going to be user local jails container classic and these are the settings that we need we've got allow raw socket and um, sockets is it clean persist um some other settings i forget what they're for but the important thing here is permissions devfs rule set equals seven that seven corresponds to etc devfs rules um i've got it called here linux jail um i should that should be be named um just a jail but the important thing is we're actually referencing it by its number so um even if you change the name here it's still gonna work because it's just using the number of the rule set so let me just see if i can actually bring this down a bit yeah it's a bit better so what we've got is there's the rule set so that pulls in the devfs rules that um allow access to the audio devices and the um nvidia graphics card so what we've got here um is next section the network so that's where we set the network so you can see here ip4 address that's local host so remember in a previous step what we did was we actually cloned the loopback device um to lo1 um there isn't a loop actually a loopback device in jails um like you have on the host now this next section is actually the fs tab and you can create an um, fs tab in the jail and there's a command you can add to the jail config so that it actually uses that fs tab but the issue is if you do that when you when you stop the jail the file system that's been mounted from the jails fs tab isn't unmounted so if you have for example in the fs tab a line that mounts the download directory from the host to the jail when you stop the jail that download directory isn't unmounted so the reason we're doing it this way is because this then allows the file system to be unmounted when you stop and restart the jail so what we've got here is defined couple of things that we actually need to um, get set up so you can see here we've got mount plus equals and the section between the double quotes is basically what you would have in your fs tab and what you would first of all see here is this path variable and what that is is that's related to this section up here so you can see we've got this path variable here which is user local jails container name so that's user local jails container containers classic so what this is is basically instead of typing out the full path here we can just reference it so that this path would be use local jails containers classic dev um, and so on 
So what we're doing is we're mounting DevFS, um, TempFS, um, we're mounting Home, uh, we're mounting Temp, and the reason for that is because we're going to actually set this up with uh, DBus, and what that allows us to do is actually get desktop notifications from the browser running in the jail appearing on the FreeBSD host. So if you've got a notification coming in when you comment or something on YouTube and you're logged into Firefox running in the jail, the notification will actually go down DBus from the jail to the host and then appear in your notifications. What we're also doing is we're actually mounting home. Here, so we've got null FS for home. And what we've got down here is two sections that were actually commented out that we need to uncomment at the end of the process. So what we're doing here, first of all, is we're actually mounting the home username downloads directory from the host to the jail. And the next section down here is what we're doing is we're mounting the xdg runtime directory which is var run xdg username from the host to the jail and what this does is this is this is the location of the wayland socket so what we basically do is we allow access to the wayland socket so that in the jail what we can do is actually specify the just as with X11, you can sort of export the display. On Wayland, what you can do is you can set the Wayland um, socket to be used. So what will happen is when we run a GUI application in the jail, it then uses the Wayland socket that's mounted in the XDG runtime directory, and the window is displayed on the host. So that's why we set up the... Um, xdg runtime directory but as i said what we need to do is actually uncomment this section later on because we've got to set some stuff up before we uncomment it okay so that's the devss rules pf so on pf um what we need to do is actually um, add a couple of lines to nap the traffic from the jail out of the host and what you'll see here is I've got a, a full PF example down here. And these are basically the two lines that we have. You can see here NAT from internal interface from LO1 network. So this LO1 is the uh, cloned loop loopback device in the jail. Uh, I'll sort of go through this. So what we actually do is once we've got to that stage we can actually start up the jail um, i'm using doas here but you can use sudo so let me just increase that a bit so uh, doas service jail one start classic and classic is the name of the jail that we created and again we're using one start because we haven't set the jail to auto start uh, in our rc.conf because as I said if we do that we'll get issues with mounting um, I believe it's related to ZFS and the data sets aren't mounted in time for the jail so it kind of com basically complains um, but anyway that's how we start the jail then what we do is we enter the jail and we run doas jexec classic bin sh and what I'll do is I'm just going to switch across to my ex, is it Accepted Doaz? No, I think it's user local Accepted Doaz. User local Doaz. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, here. So this is why um, it's a good idea to use Doaz because what you can do is define rules like this. So uh, I've got these rules here defined permit no pass DJ Wilcox command J exec command service JLS and what this basically does is allow me to run those commands without being prompted for my password so I can just 
run Doaz J Exec Classic bin SH and not be prompted for my password. So that's a reason to use Doaz. So what this does is this actually starts the um the this puts you into the um the jail logs you in basically as root uh, with bin sh so the first thing we need to do is actually add a user so by default there's not going to be any home directory so what we do is we run the add user script to create a user which will then create a home directory in the jail so that we can then mount the downloads directory from the host to that jail so add user you should know how to use add user and basically during the setup it will prompt you do you want to be added to any groups and what you do is you add yourself to real operator and video and then at the end what you do is you set the password so once you've done that what you need to do is run uh, P A W S W D. Um, put in the password, your, your new password for that account. Okay. So DNS. So the way the DNS works may be a bit confusing. So there's no loopback device in the jail. So you can't run without a bit of extra work that I haven't figured out. You can't run unbound in the jail it's expecting the loopback device um, also the host you can't ping with my setup at least you can't ping from the jail to the host so i have unbound running on the freebsd host for the for my dns and so we can't at least i haven't figured out how you can get the run the dns use the DNS on the free BSCD host in the jail. So in this example, what we're doing is we have our etc resolve.conf and what we've got is search local domain and then the, no the name server. Now, typically on my host, the name server would be localhost 127.0.0.1. Um, but in the jail what we need to do is actually put in the name server either of our router or a external dns service like um google or cloudflare you know google is 8.8.8.8 .8 and 8.8.4.4 uh, i don't know what um can't remember what cloudflare is but anyway that's the etc resolve so don't put in uh if you've copied the resolve.com from the host to the jail as i showed you earlier on you may just need to tweak it because um, it may be set to local host and that won't work and you'll be baffled so set the name server to either your router or the external dns so the next step um is actually bootstrapping the system so this is just basically you know how you would set up freebsd um, as a regular host so we're going to be root here so what we do is we run user sbin pkg says do you want to up, you know install pkg yep do that then what we do is we um, do pkg update and upgrade so pkg update upgrade once we've done that we can actually install sudo so pkg install sudo um, then we need to um, edit um, etc sudoers so vi sudo always use vi sudo uh, you can also if you want to set a different editor you can actually do like um at least in it'd be like export editor equals you know nano or whatever because by default it uses vi so then what you need to do um when you're using vi sudo is actually create a new entry like this username all equals all and change username to your username right so nvidia drivers so what we're actually going to do is set up an entire system in the jail so that we have everything we need to um, run with hardware acceleration for the browser basically 
So what I'm going to do is actually, while I come to think, to go as J exec. Uh, Classic bin sh su my username and mv sgl run nvidia dash smi. And what you'll see here is I'm in the jail and I'm running nvidia sm nvidia smi, and you'll see I've got this. See picture of another command called nv sgl run. What that is, is that's a uh, another command that we need to set up and install. And what that does is that allows us to use CUDA. As you'll see here, we've got NVIDIA SMI, the driver version, and the CUDA version. And what we need to do is actually, you must install the exact same driver version in the jail as on the host. For the NVIDIA graphics card to work and what this shows is that we can actually use the GPU and CUDA in the jail because it has access to those DevFS rules on the FreeBSD host. Okay so what we're doing here is we're running PKG install we're still root uh, logged in so um, so you see here I'm I'm logged in as root. So we'd be logged in as root in the jail. And we'd install the NVIDIA drivers, NVIDIA settings. Um so I can actually uh, let me just switch across. I don't need this one here. Uh, Windows about but, uh, um Yeah, so this is the NVIDIA settings. Okay, this is the NVIDIA settings panel, right? I've just launched that in the jail and you can see it's being displayed on the host. So we install the NVIDIA settings, NVIDIA DRM 5.5K mod. Lib, invent, um, lib VA Intel driver, Lib VA utils, uh, GPU firmware Intel K mod, um, maybe Lake, and this is actually needed. If you don't install, uh, I didn't have this installed on my host for a long time, and I was getting terrible audio popping using Chromium, the Chromium browser, and installing the GPU firmware uh, Intel K mod, uh, KB Lake fixed the issue because it was kind of like one of those little popping things when it's kind of trying to access the GPU. Um, so that's, those are the packages we need to install. And what we do is we edit our rc.conf in the jail using sysrc and we create a KLD list. By default, the, um, the rc.conf file in the jail is actually empty. Uh, unlike when you set up FreeBSD normally on a host. So what we're doing here is we're adding um, i95, uh, the NVIDIA mode set, NVIDIA DRM, Linux, and Linux 64, or you can manually edit the file. The next bit is the libc6-shim, and this is needed for CUDA. So what we're doing is actually um, installing two bunches of packages here we've got the um, Linux NVIDIA libs um, libva uh, libvdpauvagl and the libva NVIDIA driver and these are needed for um, you know hardware acceleration and then we install the uh, pkg uh, install libc6 shim and this is when you want to use CUDA, what you actually do is you actually prefix the command with mv dash dash sgl run. So, for example, when I'm recording OBS Studio as I am now on FreeBSD, I have a desktop entry that 
runs OBS but prefixed with this command here and what that allows me to do is use um, the MVENC encoding on OBS Studio um, for using the graphics card uh, instead of the CPU. So again, this is the across here. You can see, whereas if I just run NVIDIA dash SMI, you'll see CUDA version not applicable here. Whereas if I prefix it with that command, you'll see CUDA is showing up. So, right, next is Wayland. So what we're going to actually do is install some um, Wayland packages, Wayland, Wayland protocols, um, seated, QT5, CT, um, QT5, Wayland. And what we're going to do is actually enable seat and dbus in the jail. And it should, that should be, uh, we're logged in as root, so we wouldn't need sudo. So uh, sys, sysrc, seat enabled, yes. And then dbus enabled, yes, as well. Okay, so what we can now do is we can actually switch to our user. So if I just exit here, this is the um, user we set up. Um, the other thing I want to mention is, I've got this in my notes. Uh, let me just check if I've missed a step. Okay, add user. Yeah, so the other thing I wanted to mention is um, checking that you have the, so I'm just going to switch to our user we created. Um, what do you use to ID? Yeah. Okay, so what you see here is ID. Typically when you first, when you create a new setup, the First user account is going to have a UID and GID of 1001. Um, but what you just need to be aware of is making sure that the ID matches the ID on the host. And the reason for this is because we're going to be mapping the download directory from the host of the jail. You want to have the same UID and GID for the user on the host is in the jail because Otherwise, when you download a file with Firefox and it's saved to the downloads directory, you don't want to have you don't want to have a clash of permissions. Um, so, uh, add user, yeah, switch to our user. Right, so we switch to our user, and what we need to do is actually create the XDG runtime directory, which we're actually going to be then mounting the XDG runtime directory from the host to the jail. So what we do is we run sudo mkdir-p var run xdg user. And what that will do is that will create a path of var run xdg and then your username. You need to then um, run chown, so sudo chown capital dash capital R user colon wheel var run xdg user sudo change mod 700 var run xdg user so that gets the xdg runtime directory set up and again that is something i mentioned that we set up in the mount options in the jail config which we can uncomment after we've got this set up so install zsh or whatever shell you want but basically we're using this so that we have a shell config where we can export variables that needed to get this to work like the Wayland socket and the XDG runtime directory. So we install um, ZSH, ZSS completions, syntax highlighting. And what we've got here is uh, we need to create a blank uh, .zshrc file. You can add your code um, after you get this set up. Uh, but if we don't create this um, file, the ZSH will complain. Um, so just create a blank .zshrc file with a little comment in it. 
then we move on to the ZSH EMV. So this is where we're actually going to be um, setting up the shell config. So this is .zsh emv and what we need to do is actually we've got the path set up here so that's the path and what we need to do is actually export the xdg runtime directories um, or xdg directory so we've got xdg um, config home cache data and we need to actually export the xdg runtime directory here typically if you're actually setting up a desktop environment um, using Wayland, uh, whether it's DWL, LabWC, Wayfire, um, River, any of them, they will automatically um, set this variable. Also, on 14.3, important uh, 14.1, um, the xdg runtime directory is actually automatically created and the variable set um, and exported so you don't have to do anything but because we're doing this this in a jail we actually have to manually create the directory and export it in our shell config uh, we then have export um, qt qpa platform theme and um, we've got qt 5 ct installed and this is the Wayland section. Uh, we don't need this console kit. I should have commented that out. That was when I was actually setting up KDE to run in a jail. So what we've got here is um, export Wayland display equals Wayland dash zero. So what that is, is that's the name of the Wayland socket that is actually in the XDG runtime directory on the FreeBSD host. That we're going to be mounting to the jail so that whenever we run a a um application in the jail uh, which we can actually run from the host so what i've got is a set of scripts that will actually allow you to run applications on the freebsd host that will be started in the jail and then the window is displayed on the host um, using the wayland socket so for example, Qt5ct, bang, you can see that's coming up there. So this is Qt5ct started in the jail with the window being displayed on the FreeBSD host uh, using Wayland. So Wayland display, Qta, this is for uh, Qt and this is for GTK, just specifying that we're using Wayland. Uh, we don't need this section here, so that was just me manually doing it. So, to actually get applications to communicate with the D bus, um, I'll just uncomment that back there because I'll show you. I was using this before. The issue is the D bus um, session, the D bus session bus address on the FreeBSD changes each time you reboot. So you can't export that um, the bus setting in the shell config in the jail. But what I've got is a set of scripts that will actually take the dbus when you launch an application on on the FreeBSD host that launches it in the jail. What it does is it sends the dbus address from the host to the jail when it opens the application, so that it can communicate over dbus back to the host. For example, for um, YouTube notifications um, in the browser. So that's the shell config. We set the path. We export the XDG directories, uh, Qt, Qt platform theme, uh, Wayland. And um, what we need to do now is actually change the shell. So we're going to change the shell to ZSH. So we're running as our user not as root so chsh dash s user local bin zsh we then need to exit out um, and then switch back in as it were so what we need to do is after we've changed the shell we we exit and then we log back in su dash our username once we've done that it will then pick up the changes in the um 
We'll pick up that you've changed shell and then use the shell config. Uh, next thing we do is actually set the locale. So um, vi.login.conf me character set, you know, language. And then we run um, cap underscore mkdb and the login.conf. And this is needed so that you set the locale, uh, which is typically needed by a lot of applications. Next thing is the audio. So what we're doing is we're enabling the SND IOD audio in the jail in the rc.conf, except for rc.conf. I'll, I'll show you the full. So user local jails container classic, etc. rc.conf. So you can see I've just got these. I was playing around with local unbounded DNS, DNS kit, but couldn't get it to work. So these are the three things we set. The KLD list with um, i915 and the NVIDIA Linux and Linux 64. Dbus enabled and SND um, enabled. And again, we've got the, in our DevFS rule set, what we have is a rule that exposes the audio devices. So what this does is this basically enables the audio in the jail. And then what happens is when you play audio, it's going to be routed to the host um, because the audio from the host is exposed in the jail. So it just comes out the, the host basically. Um, but what we need to do which I'll get onto is actually set up Firefox because Firefox by default on FreeBSD uses Pulse Audio, and we don't want to and we don't want to have to run Pulse Audio on the host just to get the audio to work. So what we can do is change Firefox to use OSS Audio, and then the audio will just come out as I showed you when I played stuff from YouTube. So Firefox sudo pkg install Firefox. Okay, yeah. Um, GTK themes. Um, what we want to do is actually the reason why we're installing GTK themes is because we want to have dark mode enabled in Firefox. Yeah, so we need to have a theme that has got dark mode enabled, um, which will actually set up. So sudo pkg install GTK arc themes. Um, next thing we want to do is actually create the user dash dirs dot dirs file. And what this is is this is used by xdg uh you know when you set up a desktop like a desktop environment like gnome or something like that and what it will do is it will create all these directories document desktop download documents um you know videos picture templates public all that sort of stuff what this file does is this allows you to um so the problem is like um a lot of the time when you set stuff up it will automatically create sort of you know these directories and what you can do with this file is first of all say enabled equals false and what that does is that suppresses the creation of any of those default directories like public templates download documents all those kind of things and what we do is we just specify xdg download dir equal home downloads and i always use an underscore and if I just come across um, to my home directory here, um, so what you'll see, these are the um, directories in my home. You'll see they're all lowercase. And if I come into config, what was it? <laughs> uh, user dir, yeah. So dot config user dirs. So this is an example of all of the directories. So what you can do is, if like me, you prefer um, lower cased directories in your home, uh, you, you can get really annoyed that it's creating an uppercase downloads directory or something like that. So what you do is you have enabled equals false in, in .config user dash dirs dot dirs. And you have the desktop directory. So you just put in the path to desktop documents, downloads, music, pictures, video. And it won't create any other directories apart from those ones. So 
that's why we just have false and then we're just creating the downloads directory we don't want any other directories okay so fonts so what we also need to do is install noto basic and noto emoji um in the jail because for example youtube a lot of youtube videos use emojis in the you are i'm not in the url in the title and if you don't have these packages installed you'll just get broken fonts in um in the browser which is very annoying okay so jailfox so this is where i'm actually setting stuff up so another thing is what we're going to do is actually create a desktop launcher that will open up Firefox in the jail and have the window displayed on the host. But what we also want to do is actually set that as our default browser. And there's a bit of work you've got to do to do that. So what that means is when I run XDG open, it actually opens a link on the, um, on the host and it starts in the jail version of Firefox as opposed to the regular version. So on the FreeBSD host, what we got is, um, that should be sh shell. Shell, <laughs> shell, oh, two L's, yeah. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so what we have is a, we're going to put some scripts in our bin directory. So if you don't have a bin directory, create one. And the reason we need to do this is because um, we need to do a bit of trickery to get the XDG open links to work. So what we're doing, first of all, is we're actually um, going to create a script called Firefox that runs Firefox in the jail. So what we have is I've got Firefox installed on the host. I've also got it installed on the jail. Um, so what we need to do is actually have a way to launch either Firefox on the host or on the jail. So what we have in this script here is if greater than zero, then run this, otherwise exit one. So what this does is if you run this script without any arguments, it will just exit. And the reason for that is because this is used by XDG open to open a URL. So typically if you want to um, open a link, you'd like, you know, Firefox on the command line, it'd be like Firefox, you know, Firefox, and then like, you know, Google doc, you know, HTTP, you know, Google.com, and that would open Google.com in Firefox. So the URL is the argument to Firefox. So that's why th this script will basically just run with a URL that is passed to it to open that URL in the browser. So what we've got here is this thing called wrapper bbsd a firefox double quotes dollar curly braces at what the hell's that? What this means is any arguments passed in the script. So, uh, you know, if you pass two URLs or one URL, it basically, if you just do one, it's just one, the, the first argument, this is just all arguments. Um, so what this does is this runs this script here, the dash A, Firefox, and then any additional arguments. So that's the first one. So what we've got here is the shell config. So this is the ZSH EMV on the FreeBSD host. And what we need to make sure is in our path, what we need to do is actually set home bin to be before the rest of the path. And the reason for this is because when we run Firefox, so let me just show you. Okay. Exit, exit. So which Firefox, and you'll see it's home, my username, bin Firefox, where ls-l user local bin 
Firefox. So this is where it gets, gets interesting. So Firefox is in user local bin Firefox, but it's actually a symbolic link to user local lib Firefox Firefox. And this is important because it relates to desktop entries, which I'm going to get into. So you can see here when I run which Firefox, it's actually showing the path to that script that I just created. But we also want to be able to launch the regular Firefox um, as well. So I'm going to show you how we get around that. So important thing is in our path, we're setting the home bin directory to precede the, the rest of the shell path so that the Firefox script in our bin directory takes precedence over the one in the user local bin. And that's needed for the XDG open. So what we've got here is a uh, wrapper free BSD. Let me just open that in here. Oh no, it uses the syntax highlighting. So, okay. So what we've got up here is usage. This is basically um, script usage. So if you run dash, the script with dash H, it prints this out. So first of all, we check the number of arguments passed to the script. Uh, if there's no arguments um, passed to the script, um, print the usage. Uh, then we've got get ops. So what we have here is two things. We've got dash H for help and then dash A and then app equals opt arg. So what does that mean? So when you run this wrapper freebsd dash freebsd script with the dash a option allows you to pass in the name of a application that you want to launch so the, what this script is doing is you run um let's go back to that um i'll go back to that firefox script um go with me so you can see here Wrapper FreeBSD dash A Firefox. So that's running this script and the dash A opt arg is going to apt is going to be equal to opt arg and the, that's the options argument which is say dash A Firefox. So app would be equal to Firefox. And um, so that basically sets a variable that's equal to what you've passed in and, and that's the application that you want to launch so what we've got down here is um running the application in the jail so what you can see here is this is why we're using doaz so you need to get doaz set up for this uh, with those rules that i showed you um to actually run the script without being prompted to enter your admin password because we're going to be running this script from a desktop entry that shows up in your application launchers and you don't want to have to put in your admin password when you're launching um an application so what we've got here is doas j exec classic user local bin wrapper jail and that's a script that we're going to look at next and what we've got in here is dash u user dash d d bus and d bus session bus address equals d bus session bus address dash a app and then this um bit of code that's all of the remaining arguments so what does this do so it runs this wrapper jail script and it passes in these options so it's passing in your username so this is run on the host so this is passing in your username the D bus session bus address um, path, the app that you want to launch, and any arguments to that app, you know, which might be a URL or something. Okay, so all right. So then, what we have um, is a couple of extra things, um, and then we'll move on to the script in the jail. So what we have here is desktop entry. So on the host, what you'll have is uh, local share applications, which is where the desktop entries are. The okay, ls-l user local share applications. 
So the system directory for that, uh, for, the ex for the desktop files is user local share applications. And what you will see in here is we've got Firefox. Um, yeah, so we've got Firefox in there. Um, and Firefox actually has a couple of files that it uses. Um, when you set the default browser, let me show you my local share applications. So what you'll see is we have a fire in our local share applications in our home. We've got the Firefox desktop entry, but we also have this other one that gets created user app Firefox, Firefox 44182.desktop. And the interesting thing is when you set the when you set Firefox as your default browser, um, in the um, you have a mime list which controls which what's the default application for di different um, kind of files is, and it actually sets um, where it uses the desktop entry. So it might say like. Um, you know, video always open with mpv.desktop or vlc.desktop. Um, and for Firefox, what happens is it actually sets the association to be this user app firefox.desktop and not the firefox.desktop. Um, okay, I know this gets confusing, but bear with me. So, what we have here is Firefox. So we've got Firefox here. And what you will find is by default, this file will look like this. It will just say exec Firefox. What we need to do is change that to be user local lib Firefox Firefox. So what we basically do is we just copy the Firefox desktop file from user local share applications, Firefox desktop to tilde forward slash dot local share applications, Firefox dot desktop in our home. And that allows us to override um, the file rather than ed editing the one in the system directory that would get overwritten. So what we basically do is we put in the full path to, um, to Firefox, again, remembering that Firefox is in user local bin Firefox, but it's actually a symbolic link to this location, user local lib Firefox Firefox. So what we need to do is change this to the full path so that it doesn't use the Firefox script in our bin directory, because then that would then launch the jailed version of Firefox. So we want to be able to open the regular version of Firefox also the jailed version so we edit the firefox.desktop file and put in the full path to firefox okay. so that's the firefox desktop then what we do is we actually create a new desktop entry called jailfox.desktop or whatever you can see i've got it here called name jailfox.desktop and what we do in exec is we actually run um, sh dash c for command we want to run and then in single quotes wrapper dash freebsd dash a firefox dash u and what this does is that runs the wrapper freebsd script passes in the application we want to launch in the jail which is firefox and this is basically like additional parameters and then this, this is just the rest of the um standard firefox you can see here on the exact lines for new window and new private window, we don't use the same code there because this is launching Firefox the first time. Once it's opened, we can just run Firefox new window, new private window. So that's just a, another thing to bear in mind. So that's the desktop entry for the for launching the um jail version of firefox now the next thing we need to look at is the um dot config mime apps dot list and this is the file that is used for setting the association between 
you know files and the program that you want that to open them so what we've got here is um got various things for like you know text html you know whatever um people http https all these kind of things um basically what you just need to do is when you change um if you open up a browser and it says this is not your default browser do you want to set it as your default browser you press yes this is the file that it actually changes um and by default what will happen is in this file with when you've got it set up with firefox as the default browser it won't say firefox.desktop it actually lists this file here to launch firefox so it's a bit confusing because you've actually got two desktop entries for firefox so what we basically do is we edit this file and we just change we just do a search to replace um, and it said the we the name will be this user app firefox you know something like that and we just change that to jail fox and what that will do is that will basically set the jail version of firefox to be the default browser on the system and the reason why we need to do go for all this palaver um creating this firefox script and you know is because you can't you can't um just set the brand the jail version of the browser to, to be the default and have it be the default on the host you've got to do a bit of, bit of leg work to get that to work so that's the my map dot list okay so we close some of these up so now in the jail what we have is this wrapper dash jail file and this is um, going to be in installed in user local bin in the jail so what we have here is the usage um, and this is the the get ops okay so this is when I showed you the the other script and it had all these things like username dbus app so what this does is we have dash u dash d dash a and this takes the stuff passed in from the other script let me just go back to the other script the wrapper freebsd script bin wrapper freebsd okay down the end okay for this here doas jxec classic wrapper jail this is the script we're referring to and you can see here passing in the user the dbus the app and any additional um, arguments so what that does is that then works with this script here so it takes the username the dbus and the app from the from the first script into this one so we can pass in the username the dbus the app and then what we do is we run su because what we need to do is when you running a command into the jail by default it's going to be root you don't want to launch firefox as root in the jail so what we need to do is we need to switch to our user in the jail so you can see here su username and this is why we want the same username in the jail as in the host because then we pass in the username from the host to the jail which is the same username so we can switch to it so we, so we switch to our username here then we run dash c and this command you can see this all in double quotes so dbus app and then the, any additional parameters so what this does is this then uh, this dbus bit here is going to be the dbus session bus address okay so that passes in the dbus the application to launch and any additional parameters that are passed with it you know like urls and another thing that dbus can actually be used for is you can actually run obs studio inside of jail and um, by passing in dbus you can then select windows on the host 
So you can actually run OBS Studio inside a jail and then pick the windows from the host on OBS Studio running in the jail, if that makes sense. So you've got access to the, the desktop, basically. Um, and this is also needed for stuff like running KDE or a full desktop. So that's how that works. We're getting there. The other important thing is Firefox OSS Audio. So as I said, by default, Firefox actually uses Pulse Audio. So what we need to do is set it to use OSS Audio instead. So in Firefox, what we do is we run about config and we create media.cubed.backend, set the option to string and then the value to OSS. Um, and that sets the um the audio to um oss audio so that as i showed you when i um opened the jail version of firefox it um you know now yeah there we go um the audio comes out of the um speakers on the host so again youtube okay yes yes people welcome back to yes yes people okay and again this is um firefox in the jail so what's happened here so i'll take you through the actual steps of what's happened so, so this was launched with jail fox so this is the desktop entry for jail fox so what what happens is we run Jailfox using our application launcher. It then runs wrapper free BSD with Firefox. So that then runs bin wrapper free BSD. This script jexec runs wrapper jail, passes a new user the dbus, the app, and any parameters. Um, and then user local jail containers classic user local bin uh, wrapper jail that then runs this script here which takes in the username the dbus the app so it switches to our user passes in dbus the app and any additional parameters and what that means is basically the audio is going to come out here um the if i get a shot. desktop notification coming in on youtube it's going to come up um on the host so any desktop notifications running in the jail version of firefox because the temp directory is mounted um, which is where the dbus um, location is um, and because we're passing in dbus when we're the path of the dbus path on the host when we launch an app in the jail dbus will work um, and again we can do stuff like pop out this we can pop out pop out the window like that no problem and uh, let me just come out there and again you can see here we only have access to the download directory. Um, another thing I should mention while my um, veins on it is there are certain things that won't work. So for example, magnet links, um, a magnet link, you know, you have torrent files and what you can have is magnet links. And typically when you click on them, um, it will say, and what application do you want to open this magnet link with? And you'd select your um, torrent client. Because the, um, it, what will happen is in the jail version, it will prompt you to open an application. And obviously we don't have a torrent client running in the jail. So um, the magnet link won't work. So you need to um, copy magnet links and then paste them into your torrent client running um, on the host. And that was just another thing that um, occurred to me. But that's basically um, the rundown um, of actually 
creating a thick jail um and uh, and then actually being able to pass in um actually be able to launch applications so maybe thinking why isn't this like a really kind of convoluted way of doing stuff with all these multiple scripts that you've got um wrapper free bsd so the reason why i created these two scripts is wrapper free bsd and wrapper jail scripts but what it allows you to do is by, by creating a new desktop entry for the jailed application that calls um dot local share patients jail fox so what these scripts allow you to do is install applications you can install applications in the jail and then all you have to do is create a new desktop entry so you can um, just copy a new desktop entry and then all you have to do is run um on this exact line all you've got to do is change the name in the application to um, launch. So um, I've got QT5 in local share applications, local share applications. Okay, so I've got a QT5 here. So what I'm going to do is um, just copy this. Um, I'm going to call this, say like, um, uh, yeah, let's just call it test.desktop. Okay, and what I'm going to do is come back to here. Right. And what I'm going to do is change this to T5CT. Okay. So what I've done is Taken the desktop entry for Qt5 CT, which is a Qt application that you use to set themes for Qt applications, basically. Um, what I've done is I've changed the exec line to run the FreeBSD um, A here. So if I was to actually run this in the terminal, okay, close the channel. If I run this. Yeah, that that's just run, that's just run the wrapper free BSD script pass in dash a the name of the application you want us to start and it's started Qt5 CT in the jail. You can see that the window's displayed on the host. Yeah. So if I now run test, I don't know, it's not it may not picked it up. I may have have to. You know, sometimes when you enter do a desktop entry, you've got to do some, you know, um, ah, okay, that's why. The name actually, from memory, the name has got to match the name of the desktop entry. Let me just check, test, no. Or, so, or sometimes you've got to like run a, you know, a command to update the desktop entries. Um, I'll just remove that testing, but you get the, you get the gist. Um, you basically just create a new desktop entry um, dash a and name of the application you want and it will um, it will launch it so those are my notes um, took a while to go through because um, there's lots of um, sort of you know bits and bobs uh, go through the um, the jail config so um, I won't go over the, the whole lot again but um, one thing to note is when you're creating the thick jails, as I said, you can use um, BSD install um, instead of actually fetching the, um, you know, the file using the fetch command. So hopefully, if you follow that along, you should be able to get um, get set up. And again, um, you can see here I can launch Firefox regularly. So this is important. So this is a regular version of Firefox. This is the jailed version of Firefox. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you, um, which I almost forgot, is actually showing you the XDG 
setup work. So you know all that setup we go went through creating the you know the bin directory, the Firefox script, and changing the desktop entries and everything. So you can see how using my application launcher I can run Firefox and it will open the regular version of Firefox and I can run Jailfox and it opens the jailed version. What I want to do now is actually show you that the after doing all that and setting the mymaps.list um, now when I open a um, a URL using xdg open it's going to open in the jailed version of Firefox okay so I mean um, Emacs here I've just opened the link um, and you can see it's now opened that link in the browser so uh, let's just come across to some others um, like slash dot torrent freak there's torrent freak you can see this is the jailed version of the browser but this is what i was on about is um actually setting the jailed version of the browser to be the default and as i said what you'll notice is um uh, if i come down to the settings there's uh, firefox is currently your default browser okay um, if I come across to oh, so the fourth, if I come across to Firefox. So this is Firefox on the host. And if I come across to settings, um, Firefox is not your default browser. So you might be thinking, oh, can't I just like come into the settings and make this my default browser? It, it, it won't work. You've got to go through this bit of palaver to get, get it working. Um, the other thing I should mention is uh, Firefox Labs, a uh, picture in picture. So this is in 130. If you go to the settings, Firefox Labs, you've got picture in picture auto open on tab switch. I'll show you what that is as a final little roundup. Okay, remember again, I'm in a. Um, Filing window manager. Okay. So, all right. So, what I'm going to do is I've opened this uh, video in a new tab. And yes, if I now switch away from that tab, you, you see how it's now automatically morning, pops that video out into picture in picture. Tea, cup of if Spice I come back, toast, as we've got it automatically pops it back through. in. So what this basically does is um, if you've got something playing and you need to switch to um, another tab to do a bit of work. In today's video, after late last night, Paul Mitchell, back, the Newcastle, and automatically pop it back um, in. Um, so again, that's in the settings, um, Firefox Lab, picture in picture, auto open on tab switch. So hopefully after all that, you should have... Um, got uh, Firefox jailed or any other application um, but again um, just to show you what's possible refresh your memory so before I um, jailed Firefox I actually did KDE I've done uh, Linux jails before I've actually jailed I've got DaVinci Resolve working in a jail before um, but these are the screenshot. This is me opening Qt 5CT on the in the jail and having it displayed on the host. Um, this is this is how I actually started um, Wayland. Uh, this is how I started um, KDE six Wayland in the jail. So I basically set some stuff up, um, and then in, instead of and then just run this as the regular user and this is KDE 6 Wayland running in the jail with the window displayed on the FreeBSD host running DWL um, with all the um, audio and everything working and again KDE 6 actually uses um, Pipewire as the audio so you actually have to start Pulse Audio on FreeBSD um, to get the audio working. So again, and again, I mentioned this before, this is the difference between 
uh, running a desktop and a, and something like Firefox is that um, you can see when I was jailing Firefox that I could actually pop the window out, um, the picture in picture out window out of the Firefox window with KDE here. Um, currently, I think um, I couldn't get it to, it's constrained to one window. So you can see I've got Firefox open here and uh, the picture in picture video, but you can't actually pop this picture in picture video out of the KDE desktop onto the 3D um, FreeBSD host, if that makes sense. Because it's, so if you actually run KDE, the desktop and open Firefox within it, and then pop out the window, you can't move that window out of this, you can't move the picture in picture window out of the KDE window onto another monitor on the FreeBSD host. But if you launch just Firefox, not the whole desktop, you can, <laughs> basically. Um, so here's the um, logout screen again. And another thing what you, you'll notice here is in the Wayland window, where someone was meant to go, oh no, it's a VM, it's a VM, mate. No, it's not a jail. You actually get this um, thing here in the window press right control key to grab pointer which is typically a thing you get in um vnc clients you know um but it's not this is actually a jail and this is a wayland window um on the host it's this is just a message that you actually get come up but you can see here as i showed you nvidia working um so this is kde6 um showing you NVIDIA working. So yeah, I've got KDE 6 working, but it's not ready for use yet. Um, there's a, on FreeBSD, there's two issues. If you install Dolphin, uh, it just crashes. It won't launch KDE and um, the, the shutdown doesn't work either. It tries to call KDE 5 to shut down the system. But that's just an overview of um, jails and what's possible on FreeBSD. You can basically run an entire desktop or any application um, in the jail and have native performance. Um, as you can see, this is a um, remember this is a application that's being run in the jail and being displayed on the host using Wayland. So there's um, there's no X Wayland involved. This is pure Wayland. Uh, there's no, um, I don't have um, um, X org installed on the on on this machine. Um, so this is running pure Wayland. Um, if we come across to help troubleshooting information, um, this is the troubleshooting information, and you'll see um, everything that's enabled. Um, web renderer working so you can see everything's working here it's picking up the um the gpu so these are basically all the sort of settings and these are identical to the settings that um on a native version of firefox so there's no no performance difference at all um once you've got everything rooted dbus working exposed the audio um and um, you know the graphics card and all that kind of stuff. It, it behaves exactly the same. There's no, there's no lag. Um, again, put a video full screen, um, play it, no problem. Um, uh, go for an Adam P. Hello everyone. See if we can find a bit where the cat attacks him. Back. Hope things are well. Newcastle have now went into their first international break of the season. Still he gets attacked by the cat. Well, is games. It? We have beaten Never Tottenham the yesterday, video. despite again not yeah, playing that yeah, well. Put that full screen. Doesn't matter when you aren't playing well and you're still winning games. So you got to credit Newcastle. No bother. Um, come back. Let's see if it was. Oh, the one where he gets Joe attacked by the cat. Spoken. I must have missed it. But anyway, you can see all these videos will work fine, use. sort of full screen here. No issues. It's over the past 10. And the issue and the overlying question is that the... No stutter, nothing. Um, so yeah, YouTube works fine. Um, uh, as I said, you'll get the desktop notifications coming in 
working perfectly. Uh, let me just see if I can actually, let's just download this image. So I'm going to save this image as the downloads here. Save. Come across to my downloads directory and you'll see it saves the image there because it's, it's mounted. So um, come across. Okay. So uh, mounts uh, and what you'll see down here, these two lines here. Downloads is mounted on Penis Classic Home username downloads and the var um, xdg run directory is mounted there as well. Um, so let's have a quick look at the var xdg run directory. You need to switch to root. Uh, var run xdg username and in here what you'll see is the wayland see this wayland zero remember in the um zsh emv shell config for the jail we exported the xdg runtime directory set to this location because this because this is is mounted from the host to the jail what happens is when you run a application in the jail it then uses this to actually open the applications window which in turn opens it on the host so it's much much better way of um, opening applications you can also do similar thing with x11 socket um, this is far superior to um, doing something like um, displaying the window using vnc or um, ssh um, x forwarding or something like that that a lot of people do and um, this is basically native performance um uh, and, and there's no issues you can see you're scrolling um and i mean move the window about um just as a native window um so yeah uh, basically works exactly the same as on, on the host um, except it's all sandboxed, it's, it's all sort of secure. So um, we, we don't have any access to um, any directories on the host that we don't want to. We just, you know, just mount the, the downloads directory. Um, but we, we also still have Firefox on the, um, on the host that we can run. So we can either, we can launch them both with desktop entries. So we can, uh, I've run Jailfox or Firefox, so Firefox in there. Um, the other thing is, um, I also like to use an OpenVPN split root. And what I have is a desktop entry called uh, VPN Firefox that automatically um, puts Firefox into a particular route so using set fibs you can set an application to go through the vpn and that still works with this setup as well so even though i've got um uh, i've changed some stuff about by using desktop entries you can have separate desktop launchers for the jailed version of firefox and the uh, regular version on your desktop so that's all for now. I know that was a bit of a long one. Uh, there's a lot to, to get through, a lot to cover, setting up gels, setting up the audio, setting up the V, you know, um, the graphics, um, and getting the XDG runtime to work, um, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of it, what you've got is a um, nice secure version of Firefox um, because as I said, the goal of this was we don't have sandboxing on, Fire, um, on FreeBSD. So what this does is this allows us to restrict Firefox's access to um, directories on the host by running in a jail. So I'll put links to all this um, under the video. You should be able to follow along uh, as long as you're, uh, you know, fairly proficient with FreeBSD, know what you're doing. Uh, you should be able to get this set up um, in no time. And um, as I said, what this technique allows you to do um, with those scripts is basically uh, install 
applications in a jail and then just create new desktop entries um, and change the exact line to the application you want to launch and then you can um, launch the application as though it was a native application using your um, application launcher in which in my case is Tofi. So that's all for now and I'll wrap that up.